Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week is part two on Manus and Manus just has recently released all of these new functionalities, including creating a slide presentation. So if you're interested in exploring Manus, then please keep on watching. So I talked about deep research in Manus last week and, and Manus is a free tool. Of course, there's a subscription option as well, but I found that I don't need to subscribe just yet. And what I'm going to do is if I just move myself over, uh, you can see the prompt that I put and I actually use this drop down menu create. Let me just show you. And I said a lecture um, presentation design and then I edited the actual prompt. So. I said, please create a comprehensive and engaging presentation covering. And originally that said lecture presentation. I wanted to use the research paper that was generated by Manus last week in order to create a new slide deck for this. But of course, I don't want to be encouraging death by PowerPoint. And so I've got course introduction, guiding questions, uh, syllabus overview, expected outcomes, assessment methods, fundamental concepts. Manus came up with this template and I've just changed some of the words. I wanted interactive elements, exercises, group discussions. I wanted a summary, next step, key takeaways, and design it as a slideshow that can be um, easily converted. And then what did I put? I need to just go down and then ensure content is pedagogically sound, appropriately paced for the target audience, and includes visual aids to enhance understanding. And then I said, make sure you include meta cognition prompts. So I haven't used the slide deck function before. So I'm going to press enter and then let's see what it comes up with. And we're going live here. So let me just uh, see what's happening. I've received your request, okay, to create a comprehensive and engaging presentation. I will design it as a slideshow that can be easily converted to PDF. OK, and then I'm not sure how long this is going to take. The actual research paper with the literature review last week, I think it was about 15 minutes. So I may have to pause this video so that you're not just watching Manus uh, trying to work on this. So let me pause and then come back to you. OK, we are back and that took about 17 minutes. So let me just scroll up to the top so that you can see what Manus did. So. I uploaded the full literature review from my last Manus interaction. And then what did it do? It did a slides outline first, then interactive elements, exercises, summary, and key takeaways, next steps. Let me just expand this bit. What is inquiry-based learning? Lovely theoretical foundations. I mean, I, I want to see the actual presentation to see if the quality is any good. Uh, implementation considerations, practical applications, interactive elements. And I must say this was just the content. So I didn't put anything about the actual visuals or what images to use or branding colors. And so I think next I'd probably do that or include it in my initial prompt, right? So I'm not reprompting. Um, and then we're creating the title slide creating the fundamental concepts, et cetera. So I won't go through all of this, but I'm just scrolling down so that you can see. Now it says I've successfully uh, created a comprehensive and engaging presentation on inquiry-based learning and mathematics education based on your literature review. Okay, I can't, I really can't wait to see this. Uh, 10 professionally designed slides with consistent visual theme. So again, I should have put, you know, some kind of guidance in terms of the visual theme. Uh, and let's have a look. So here are the slides. I'm going to move myself over here. Let's make myself a little bit smaller so that I can just be along the side. So, of course, I didn't say anything in terms of the color scheme or anything, but let's just look at the content. OK, so here's the syllabus overview. So this is the syllabus overview. If this was going to be a course that I was going to run at University of Hong Kong and I have covered inquiry based learning with my students, then They'd want to have a look at an overview, have a look at the assessment methods, and then I specifically ask for guiding questions. What defines inquiry-based learning and mathematics? How does it impact student learning and engagement? And what are the keys to successful implementation? And then there's a lovely little metacognition prompt. Before we dive deeper, take a moment to consider what are your initial thoughts or preconceptions about inquiry-based learning and mathematics? And 
What a great way to activate prior understanding and knowledge and starting with that. Okay, so let's just have, oh, it's got images here and the images are appropriate. I, I think we should be bringing back the abacus uh, into classrooms to help students understand the uh, base number system. And here it's got what it is. So this is a little bit of direct instruction and then the summary and then the metacognition prompt. How does this definition challenge or align with your previous understanding of mathematics instruction? That's such a good question, actually. And then let's have a look at the theoretical foundations. So it's constructivist theory, absolutely. And then looking at the evolution. So let's see. It gained momentum through institutional support this century, current status, recognized as a formalized pedagogical framework. Now, remember, we can edit any of these slides too. So I'm just going through the initial thoughts about what Manus has generated. And uh, it's got what constructivist theory is. What is the pedagogical shift? I love that. From teacher-centered to student-centered, from passive reception to active construction, from procedural to conceptual. I absolutely love that. And then mathematical thinking development encourages curiosity and questioning, develops problem-solving strategies, builds conceptual understanding. And then what is the metacognition prompt, which I'm going to actually start using some of these prompts. How does constructivist theory align with your own experiences learning mathematics? Can you recall a time when you truly constructed your understanding of a mathematical concept? And, you know, asking educators to share their stories. Now, this is only 10 slides, so that's why I really do want to just go through this. Ooh, and I would, of course, want to verify this data here. It says research proven benefits. So I would actually go to my reference section in the research paper that Manus created for me last week, and I would check this because I need to verify any research that I'm actually sharing with educators and ensure that the AI model is not hallucinating or, as we say, creating a map, a mirage or confabulating. So here it says incre enhanced conceptual understanding, increased student engagement and motivation, development of mathematical thinking skills and transfer of problem solving skills across context. Now, while I've read extensive research um, that actually supports this, I would still want to get the names of the paper and I'd still want to reference them on my slides so that teachers can look into the research themselves. And then here we've got key success factors. And then I love looking at the metacognition prompt. Considering these outcomes, what aspects of IBL effectiveness surprises you most? And that's a prompt that I would actually use. How might these findings influence your teaching practice? Beautiful. Okay, so then we have implementation considerations. I won't read through all of this, but I will share the link of this so that you can go through this yourself. And I love this metacognition prompt. Which of these implementation challenges resonates most with your teaching context? What strategies might you use to address these challenges? Okay, so let's just look at the challenges because I hear these a lot. Time constraints, of course, teacher preparation, and in terms of professional development needs, assessment challenges, of course, trying to, I think, create those assessments that really capture deep conceptual understanding. Uh, equity issues in terms of making sure that there is accessibility for all students. And it is a balancing act. It's structure versus openness, or I say direct instruction and inquiry-based learning, and really balancing the two, marrying the two. And I always say it's a dance between the two, depending on where your students are and how much scaffolding they need. Okay, let's look at practical applications. I do love the visuals, and I do love the bullet point form. It's so clear. So real world cases here, students explore patterns in nature. I love that. Students collect and analyze school lunch preferences. And then high school students design the most cost effective packaging for a local business. So we're actually helping the local community as well. And then we've got industry examples and then the metacognition prompt. This is actually really good. Which of these examples most closely aligns with your teaching context? How might you adapt these ideas for specific grade levels and student population? Wow, this is really good. Now, interactive elements and exercises. I would actually normally infuse the interactive elements throughout a presentation, but here's a slide that just suggests what we could do on one slide. I would actually sprinkle them throughout. So think, pair, and share, mathematical debates, gallery walks, collaborative problem solving, 
And then metacognition prompts would be before learning, what do I already know about this topic? What questions do I have? During learning, what strategies am I using? What's working well? What's challenging? And after learning, what did I learn? How does this connect to what I knew before? What would I do differently next time? This is pretty phenomenal, Manus. This is pretty good. And I can edit any of these. So summary and key takeaways. And I think this is good for just that cognitive closure and consolidation once teachers have gone through this particular module. So we've got key findings from literature, evidence-based recommendations, critical insights. So here, IBL is not about removing structure, but reimagining facilitation. Beautiful. And then we have future directions as well. Final reflection, how has your understanding of inquiry-based learning evolved throughout this presentation? What aspects will you explore further in your practice? Amazing. And then the last slide is next steps and resources. So homework assignments, there's a literature analysis, a lesson plan design. That's a great artifact, I think, to ask the educators to create. Peer collaboration, form study groups to discuss implementation. And of course, a reflective journal, a reflection journal to capture all of your thoughts. And then additional resources here. And I will verify these. I wonder if these are legitimate resources and immediate action steps, recommended reading. Okay, so you can see I've got the edit button here. So if I wanted to edit anything straight away, I can edit, right? I'm gonna exit the edit. And then I want you to see that when I download, I can actually download as a PowerPoint, a PDF. I can convert it to Google Slides and save them to a Google Drive or OneDrive, which means that I can edit anything, but I've got the basics. Now, I've said previously in my videos that I'm not a big fan of AI generated presentation tools, but I am a fan of Gamma and I am a fan of CuriaPod. As long as we educators still incorporate lots of constructivist learning, lots of exploration and curiosity, and it's not teacher led and teacher directed. And Manus, wow, this is a real mic drop moment for me, honestly. Like just going back and looking at this, I think the next stages would be for me to actually improve my prompt so that I can actually get the brand colors that I want. I could probably be more specific as well about the content and actually use my book as a reference because my book, Concept Based Mathematics, has lots of ideas about how to incorporate inquiry-based learning. Okay, so that was just looking at Manus creating slide decks and presentations and I know that you can actually create presentations on Manus just with a one line prompt. I wanted to be a bit more comprehensive and use one of their templates, which actually gave me a really nice outline of a prompt. We know that the quality of the prompt is directly proportional to the quality of the output. So it's always better, I think, to try and have a comprehensive prompt to include all of the elements that you want in a presentation. Thank you so much, Manus. This is free. I'm on a free account. If you've tried Manus and started creating these presentations, please share with me and put it in the comment section below. I will share this link in the comments. And thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope to see you next time.